keep going. Like in Lord of the Rings, <laughs> when they send the fire signals. Exactly like that. We're what? not even close. <laughs> it's over there. It's really close. It's down there. <laughs> Compost is due for a flip, I reckon. I'll take the lid off. We'll see what kind of temperature we're cooking at here. Oh, you know what? It's still at 120. That's pretty darn good, I think. Oh, yeah, it's a bit cooler over here. Yeah, I will flip it. See if we can get it back up to 140 and uh, see how it's going inside. So, not quite as broken down as I was hoping it was going to be inside, but it feels warm standing next to it. So hopefully it'll, uh, it'll keep cooking up. You know what I need is like four or five buckets of coffee grounds to put in the middle. So maybe we'll work on collecting some of those this week and, and I'll flip it again. And still got a month to break it down more before we get anywhere close to planting the garden anyhow. So we have a little bit of time. It is a beautiful evening. It's getting really, really warm, and Dominic has got the first part of our fencing set up. So he's going to tell you a little bit more about that and show you how he gets this part set up. It's actually a much more complicated system, and we have more on the way um, for our pig fencing setup. But the first steps are what you see here. So Dominic's going to tell you more about that. Just one. Someone's laying like kind of weird eggs, oh, nice. uh, which isn't really normal, but they're all kind of molting right now. So they're losing their winter feathers, getting their summer feathers, I guess. I don't really know how it works. I'm kind of making that up. But I do think that they're molting because they're starting to look a little ratty. Ten chickens, molting season. Seven is pretty good. Calcium for the chickens, or worst case scenario, calcium for the compost. So yesterday I uh, flipped the compost and it went down to about 60 degrees. So let's check it. 24 hours later, we are at, it's hard to tell there, but 80. But the compost is like, it feels warm to stand next to. So hopefully we'll be back up to a big way before long. These are like the uh, the poles or some sort of composite something. I don't really know what they are. Dominic will mention it. And then there's the wire. We actually have an energizer on the way. We'll talk more about that when we actually get it. But the first thing is that we're going to use these for the perimeter fencing. But apparently, so this is, Dominic did a lot of research and I think that he followed a lot of videos by Greg Judy. And these are the poles that he uses. And they're pretty, like they're, I mean, they're still expensive, but like they're the cheaper version that you might order. And they should last for about 40 years. And if a tree or something falls on them or if they get ran over, they shouldn't break. They're pretty flexible. And that's what he really liked about them. So that's that's the fencing that we got. Yeah, yeah good there job. You go. Nice. You'll catch on yet, my son. You'll catch on. Good job. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to cut uh, just a few trees so I can get my straight line for the first place where I want to drive in my fence posts. I should have cut these first. Now I'm going to have a big snare. I'll try to get the string up. You watch. But I'm thinking, I hope I can spare this first tree. But I don't know. In case you can't hear him, Dominic ran this string from here to here to get his straight line for his perimeter fencing. And he should have cut the trees first before he ran it, but that's it. And he's hoping to save this birch tree that I can save. Anyway, he's running it now. I'm gonna do a time lapse. Working pretty well straight, right? Well, that's pretty straight. Oh, 
20 feet. What is it? You gotta lay a post now every 20 feet and I can start driving them in. Okay. The only huh. thing is we're touching the maple tree. You know what, if I cut that spruce, I might be able to go behind the maple tree. I think it's okay if they have one pole, it's not the perfectly straight line. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. Although straight line looks nice, but that maple tree looks nice too. What do you want? Tree. Keep the maple tree? I like to keep it. Plus. So one of your fence poles might be bent over like that down there. It's okay. That would not bother me in any way. Okay. It would only bother you. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So for the rundown, if you're not following along, um, this string, this string is running from one part of the property up to the next. So like down from the road, up over there just kind of like the edge of our garden. It's kind of on this side, but the plan is to take those poles and put them in every... <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. You can see Dominic is right here and he is fixing this string. So what he's done is he got a brush cutter and he came in through here the other day and he cut a bunch of brush from here all the way up to there. And now he's putting this string so he can clear out any trees that are gonna be in the way of the fence. So once he has a straight line and a straight path cleared, he's gonna take those fence posts and he's gonna pound them down every 20 feet. Then he's gonna put, once he's done that, he's gonna put five wires through them and he's gonna electrify. Is it, are you gonna electrify all five wires? No. Nope. So you're gonna electrify two. Three. Three. The bottom middle, middle top. Bottom middle top. It's gonna electrify those with the energizer and that is gonna be the perimeter fencing to keep predators out and the animals in. So the chickens and the pigs are gonna have um, poultry netting that they're gonna be trained to have in their own areas, but if they do, and pigs apparently tend to kind of get out of that netting, um, there'll be the perimeter fencing as the backup to keep them inside. Dominic's clearing with the brush cutter over there now. We have the string cut and Amanda and I decided that we'll pound in this fence post. Um, the idea is that when the fence posts are in the ground, they are virtually unbreakable. So we're gonna pound it in and see if we can do anything to break this fence post. Yeah, let's let it go. Does it go back pretty straight? Or well, I didn't want to go because I'm afraid I'm going to smack those children. You know what I mean? Let it go down. Yeah, like just gently. Let it go. Let it go. Let's see. There's a bit of a bend on the bottom. Dad, can you vote yourself up to the moon? So after, uh, after bending it in a few different directions, it doesn't really have too much of a bend on it. Seems like it's still in pretty good condition. Okay, buddy, get off so don't move up on you. Hasn't sent them to the moon yet, though. So when you step on it really far down close, it gets pretty bent. But when it's in a fence, it'll have uh, 570,000 pound pressure wires going through it. So. Take this out. But even if it, went, it was just really bent up, now it's pretty good again. So imagine if a moose comes and fires into it and bends it around, then you should be good. Soft ground there. That's why we picked that spot. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just recycle vinyl. So that's why they last so long. Like just like your windows in your house are supposed to last forever from the sun, right? They're UV treated and stuff. So they should last 20 year guarantee on them. So if any break within 20 years, they'll give you a new one. Plus, I mean, windows can last longer than 20 years too. So. One more, okay? You ready? <laughs> I apologize about the wind and the sun, but we are out 
in the yard. It's Saturday morning. It's finally beautiful. It has been raining for like weeks. Um, if it's not snowing, it's raining. So now we finally have some good weather that's actually landing on a weekend and I cannot believe it. But Dominic put the posts all the way down. This is not actually the perimeter of our property. This is, our property goes uh, pretty far up, but this is what we're gonna use this year. And then we'll extend it next year. Relatively straight? Yeah. What do you think? Looks good. Sorry. Right. Awesome. My concern is, is every hole that's six inches above, so the bottom one should be about six inches up, if you pound it into the top of the tag, is there gonna be too many dips in between, like, are the pigs gonna be able to squeeze out under? Mm. I don't think so. After they get a good shock, they should smart them up. They've been filling with rocks. Rocks in there. Heavy enough that they're not gonna push them out without getting shocked. So, you get to run a string from where? Oh, I had to cut this off. From here down to an acceptable tree down at the end of the property there. Oh, is that gonna be your corner post? This is, yeah. the house again so let's see the house it's back there right here um, and we have the string which is the exact length um, from the edge of the property down there and we have the marker up here and we're going to run the string from here that way and tie it up so that we can put the electric fencing kind of in even shape and hopefully yeah anyway that's the plan so he's clearing the brush from this marker extending out that way because we cleared the brush from the marker down there extending out the other way so that we can kind of get a big l shape in our yard cleared off for the electric fence when are we getting the pigs okay. april 23rd 24th okay middle of May. Yeah, so the pigs are 24 days old now, so a little over three weeks, and we'll get them at, about, I think, seven weeks. So about the middle of May, we should have them here. So it's kind of a mad rush because we work all week. Also, like half the time it's raining and you don't have good weather. Um, but that's it. We're doing our best. <laughs> No, it looks good. Probably the edge of the bank is the boundary. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so you keep your hand, give me the string, and I'll take a post. <laughs> do you want me to do this part? I have a good grip. There we go. So we have the line cut down that way and we have the line cut back that way and now Dominic is pounding in one of the posts and he has to cut a line back down to the road so that he has a rectangular area to um, put all the posts and then string them through. I don't think I've been to this part of the property before. I haven't seen this bank. Good news. Talk to the whole skidoo parts and speedometers and chainsaws. Not on our property. Oh, Probably there something you go. not on our property. Oh, wow. I'll probably clean it up anyway. <laughs> so we got a nice, clear, perfectly clear path all the way to the road here. Show them all. The perfectly clear path we have. Yeah, it's straight through there. That tree is definitely not in the way. No. No. We're, we're good. This is like five minutes. <laughs> cool. <sighs> anyway, standing around is not going to get it done, is it? Back at us. Pitter patter. Alright, we're coming to the end of... Oh, oh. We're coming to the end of this week. So Dominic got the uh, the brush cutter and he got the brush and we're right now trying to run another line of poles 
but Dominic keeps cutting that line that he was cutting earlier and he keeps going in the wrong direction because well <laughs> he's laughing but uh because we can't really tell where it goes okay okay so how do you I measured from the marker to the marker to distance with string and then we went to this top marker and it's got to be the same distance away so I'm either right on the edge or a few feet in on my lens. Okay. As far as I can surmise. You don't know. So what's the plan right now? I don't know. We're going to spread out between all the different places and see how far we can go with still seeing things. Okay. So put the, uh, the chainsaw thing will fit over the top of that. Well that's a nice big bright orange thing. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So we're trying to keep uh, something like in our, our line of sight and we're all, we're, are, we, are we all going in the same direction or are we all kind of spreading out? Uh, we're all kind of just slightly spreading out. Like, we're going to like, yeah, we're going to go as far until we can't see this anymore and then someone stops oh, and we're going to keep going. Like in Lord of the Rings, <laughs> when they send the fire signals. Exactly like that. Is it just like that? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Except for a line, not just a signal. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, let's go. That's exactly it. I can see it. Can you? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Well, I think it's behind a tree for you. Documentarian, and I have pockets. Oh, for we're not even close. <laughs> it's over there. It's not close. It's down there. <laughs> Holy well, like, can you go part way? And that's what I mean. Is we need two points yeah. to judge it off of. Yep, yeah, but I think. Yeah, but if we can't, like, if we put our second point, and we can't see the input. You need to be able to see M in. You can't just put a random point. No, no, no. I'm agreeing with you. I know, I know, but. For now, like where we can't use visuals, can we just use sound? Like, do you oh. know what I mean? Like us walking through and someone at the other end, like, no? I just, Maybe. I don't know. I think. I don't know. Can you use a drone? If we can get enough people, if we can get us in a line up far enough away from each other, yeah. we can say, yeah, I can see the white thing. Scott and Jen are home. No, oh, three of us. Oh, okay. Because we can get far away from the white post and still see it, right? As we saw yes. right there. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, as long as the last person can see the white post, then we can... Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. We'll try it. We'll try it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we had so many efforts. That's right. Yeah, let's open up for the stage. Well, that's it. It's like, you gotta take them down anyway. So, what's happening is that Dominic keeps cutting lines, but the, the two posts are so far from each other, and there's so many trees in between that no one can tell uh like how to connect the two points without seeing them so we keep going kind of off in the wrong direction each time i think that was like the fourth run fourth or fifth run through and we just keep getting off so we're gonna try to put a person at each point and somebody in the middle and try to communicate with each other um to like line up the post. So like if one person's at point A and one person's at point C, we're gonna have someone in placing themselves as point B and kind of moving around until they line up between point A and point C. 
So, we'll see how it goes. Thank you.